Welcome back to Education Animated. In this video, we're going to be talking about calculating GDP and the income approach to doing so. So let's review some intuition here. To calculate the total value of goods and services, that's GDP, economists look at the money spent on them. We can either look at the money spent as expenditure on those goods and services, or we can look at the money received as income. Theoretically, the expenditure and income approaches should give the same result since all expenditures are received as income. Here you can see a diagram showing how all expenditure from the four economic sectors, C, I, G, and X, become income, or Y. However, there are also a few technicalities we have to account for in the income approach, so it's not quite that simple. So the income approach begins with GDP being equal to national income. And that's because the basic premise of the income approach is to add all households' income together. To find national income, recall from our previous video on the circular flow diagram that households receive income in exchange for the resources they supply firms. And here's a diagram showing how income flowing from firms is exchanged with resources or factors of production, represented by fish, flowing from households. In particular, households earn profit for entrepreneurial ability, interest for capital, wage for labor, and rent for land. And so national income, Y, is the sum of these variables together. If you want a mnemonic, you can remember money, Y, is power, P-I-W-R. The first technicality we have to consider is net income of foreigners. And this stems from a difference in GDP and national income. National income is the income of all the country's citizens, even if they live abroad. GDP, however, is only the value of final goods and services produced domestically. So in order to represent GDP through national income, we have to make sure we're only looking at people who live domestically. So citizens who live abroad, because they don't contribute to GDP, their income has to be subtracted in order for national income to represent GDP. Likewise, the income of foreign workers living domestically has to be re-added because those foreign workers do contribute domestically. So if we take the difference of these two things, of income of foreigners living locally and income of citizens living abroad, then we get net income of foreigners. And we have to add this back to our equation in order for it to represent GDP. The next technicality is government subsidies. Government subsidies, in case you didn't know, are payments the government makes to companies for free to assist them. The thing is, companies record subsidies as income despite them not being in exchange for any good or service. But only income received for goods or services counts towards GDP because GDP is a measure of the goods and services being produced. So we have to subtract government subsidies from national income in order for it to reflect gross domestic product. The last technicality is depreciation expenditures. The issue is national income should reflect all income received, but corporations don't record any income they decide to spend on replacing worn out capital goods. So for example, if a company earns $100,000 but spends that money on replacing a factory, that $100,000 won't be recorded as income. So we must add that money, called depreciation expenditures, back to national income in order for national income to accurately reflect all income received. And after we add that last thing, depreciation expenditures, back to our equation, then we have the final equation for the income approach. If you'd like to download this video script, or learn other concepts, or try our interactive economic model, go to our website, educationanimated.com.